Hi everyone, welcome back to the next diecast. In today's video, I'll be showing you various techniques on cleaning diecast model cars. Now, I did a video on this topic over three years ago now, but I figured it was about time to uh, revisit it. And that video that I originally did, I don't think I did as good of a job on as, as I could have. Um, I did make it back when I was pretty much just starting off on um, YouTube. But with that being said, I'm not going to get rid of that old uh, video. I will be keeping it because I think it is kind of a part of, you know, like my channel's um, like history and everything. And I think I do still give some pretty good points in that one. But again, that was over three years ago now. So I figured this topic would be worth um, revisiting. So in this video, I'll be going over techniques on how to clean larger scale models that you see here, um, smaller scale models, as well as vintage die cast or just vintage model cars in general. And what you're going to need to do this are make sure you have kind of like a ready supply of um, soft cloths. Um, microfiber, I think, is best for just cleaning in general. And you can get, you know, just packs of these kind of smaller um, microfiber cloths off of Amazon. This is kind of a larger microfiber towel that can actually be used on real cars too. But it does kind of have the same purpose for die-cast cars. You have kind of a nice, soft, non-abrasive cloth to kind of clean up dust and, you know, fingerprints and whatnot. And here's another kind of softer cloth here too. Um, you can use, you know, like handkerchiefs and maybe if you create like your own rags out of like old um, t-shirts and stuff. I wouldn't recommend using these specifically on higher end models like this Norev Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Um, because the paints on these higher end models are, I think, more sensitive. And you might risk, you know, scratching them up a little bit if you use, if you use cloths that aren't, you know, soft and non-abrasive like these microfiber cloths. And I would never recommend using tissues or paper towels on any model car when you're um, cleaning it because they're just not really as effective, I don't think, as using cloths like these that are meant to, you know, clean objects um, of like dust and like debris and, and, and stuff like that. While paper towels and tissues do kind of fulfill that purpose. On model cars, you do have, you know, lots of like nooks and crannies to, you know, keep in mind. Um, and just cloths that kind of lift the dust completely off off the car and not, you know, spread it around. If you use like a tissue or a paper towel, then you might be spreading it around and not actually getting it off the car. Whereas for these cloths here, the dust comes off on the cloth and then you can shake it out um, like once you're done. And I would also have a set of brushes like these. These were from a set I got from Amazon, I believe. They're meant for all kinds of purposes, like cleaning electronics and stuff like that. But they came with a variety of different types of brushes. You have kind of harder plastic based bristles like these. And then you have softer bristles. These are almost like horsehair bristles or even like makeup brush bristles. I don't know what they're actually called, but you're gonna wanna probably use this quite a lot when you're getting into kind of the nooks and crannies of your die cast cars. These kind of plastic bristle brushes do work great though for when you're getting kind of in between like the windshield and the hood and stuff like that. But if you are worried about the paint, I would definitely use a much softer brush like um, this one here. So as you can see, I have four different uh, models here. These are two extreme examples of dust that can get on models. These were in storage out in the open in a closet. And over the course of several months, they got this dusty. So when you have your models out on the shelves, not in, in a closet, this can kind of you know be, I guess, a sample of what happens if you don't clean the models fairly frequently. And these models won't be harmed with dust on them, but they just don't look good, you know? And of course, the, the same goes for, you know, cleaning off like fingerprints and everything too. Like you might not be able to see them, but after a while of picking up and putting down all these models, you're going to see the fingerprints. And it is good to kind of get all of this, you know, dirt and grime off of your cars. So these are kind of extreme cases, as I said. Um, I think in general, if you have your cars out on open shelving, I would dust them or clean them every two weeks, if not every week to week and a half, depending on how dusty that particular room gets. Um, and if you're trying out like a new space to, to put your cars, just kind of periodically look and see how dusty that they're actually getting. And the only way to really prevent dust from getting on your models completely is to have them in enclosed kind of display cases, like the one that you'll see in the later part of this video where I show my kind of smaller scale cars. But they're kind of out of many people's price ranges. I've seen online that um, acrylic clear cases are sold for 118 scale cars, but they can get pretty pricey and you have to kind of find like, you know, wall space for them and stuff. But if you just want to kind of prevent dust in general, the best way to do so is just to make sure that you're cleaning up your models every, you know, two weeks or so. 
And if you happen to rotate your models, like have some in storage and have some not in storage, then that's actually really good because um, then you're actually preventing dust from getting on a lot of your models as they sit kind of inside their boxes and everything. But if you have models in open storage like I have for these two, they can also still get dusty. So make sure that even for models in storage that you're checking them over for any dust or dirt that might be getting um, on them and to clean them as you see fit. So for extreme cases like this Ford um, Torino right here, you're, you're just gonna wanna take a cloth and then give it kind of a once over like this. Get kind of the, uh, and with this, you will get kind of most of the dust off. You can see it kind of rubs like that. This isn't scratching. It's just the dust is so kind of caked on there that when I rub it with this cloth, it kind of groups together like that. Um, and even with just that one swiping of this cloth, pretty much all the dust is off. And that's kind of the beauty of, you know, softer cloths like these. Give it kind of a once over. You don't have to really do like a thorough job this first time around. Um, so you kind of get like the tops and the sides and everything. Get the wheels and stuff too. And you can even open up the doors of the model. You can see because dust does get on the interiors of models, as, as you can see here, a very prevalent kind of example of that. Um, just kind of take your finger, wrap it around the cloth like that, and then kind of go in and out in between the seats in the back seat here. And this first round, you're not gonna get like every speck of, of dust. It's just kind of meant to be like a starting point. So, all that is pretty much off now for that first round. Then that's when you kind of get a, a smaller cloth, like one of these smaller microfiber cloths or a kind of similar smaller soft cloth. That's when you kind of do your, your more thorough job here. Get between all the nooks and crannies and everything, all the different like body lines and stuff. You can see for this bumper back here, I'm gonna kind of do that. You do the sides, the front end of, of course, like so. And then, now for matte paint and glossy paint, this technique will definitely work for both because you're not kind of being harsh on either type of paint when you do this. And there you go, pretty much all finished just by doing a couple go arounds with on two different cloths. You can see how the paint shines. Now to get in spots you can't really get with the cloth, that's where brushes like these come in. You can see that this mirror has kind of a gap there, the crease where the windshield meets the hood, get all that extra kind of dust that kind of goes behind like the wipers and everything. Second mirror back there. And you can see just by doing that, more dust is coming off. And then you can either just brush it off the car like that or go back around with the cloth. And this is good for the interiors too. Top of the steering wheel, kind of in the foot wells and everything too. Go back and forth on the seats, the back seats and everything. Now you can completely take your models apart to thoroughly, thoroughly clean them, but that takes a lot of time and some cars might be difficult to get apart. So this method, I think, works just fine if you want to get pretty much all the dust off. And of course, you know, you can always blow into the interior like that to kind of get any like loose dust sort of, you know, kicked up and everything. Even with just that little bit of time, you can see a, like a definite difference in, in there. And these smaller kind of plastic base brushes definitely work well too. And especially if there's areas that you can't really get to with a wider brush like this. This works good for, you know, you can see inside these kind of gauges here. And the spokes on wheels too, this works great for that because dust does get in there. But just be very careful with one of these. Don't, you know, kind of scrub it into the wheel because you might take off some of the chrome. But kind of doing it softly like this will not harm it. And even with this kind of brush too. Look, look at all that dust just kind of coming out. Make sure you shake out or clean out your brushes and cloths for each um, kind of dust thing that you do. That way you're not kind of putting more dust onto your models. Just kind of brush it off like that for each of the wheels. And then for chrome wheels they are, that, that are kind of prone to, you know, uh, fingerprints, these cloths work good too for getting off the, those on fingerprints. Just kind of wrap it around your two fingers and then wipe it like so, like that. Now I am doing this with one hand on my desk and kind of filming at the same time, so I'm not going to do a super thorough job right now, but you kind of get the point. And then even with just that, you know, effort that, that I put in just now, the car looks fantastic. I mean, look, you don't see any dust on it, really. That white's actually just a paint. Uh, actually, no, it's not a paint defect. This one is right here. But, um, yeah, plus this one does have some damage from being played with in the past. But here's this uh, Mustang next. These brushes, especially the kind of flat, thin ones like this one, work great for getting behind the windshield wipers. These windshield reservoirs do attract a lot of dust on these models. 
So you do want to kind of get in there with a brush like this and just kind of go behind the wipers and everything and then clean it out. Give it kind of a blow like right afterwards to get, you know, any remaining dust kind of kicked up, if that makes sense. And then we'll do the same thing for this one too. And convertible models are great on one hand, but also bad on the other hand. They're great because you can easily get to the interior to clean it. But on the other hand, you're gonna get a lot of dust on the interior because you don't have that kind of protection from like the roof and even like side windows and stuff like that. But that's okay, as long as you're kind of maintaining your models, you're not gonna really encounter having to do that thorough of interior cleanings all that much. So this is a gold metallic, so it is kind of easier to see the dust in certain spots. And then with this cloth on the interior, I kind of do the same thing, you know, just to clean it out a little bit. <sighs> kind of blow on it so more of the dust gets, you know, kicked up and everything. And then this brush is going to be good for this interior here as well. You can kind of do the door panels like that between the steering wheel and the gauge cluster. That's always a spot where dust can get to. And the tops of the dashboards on, on your models too, as you can see here. I'm getting in there with that brush get between the, the seats, kind of in like the foot wells and everything, behind the, the seat belts, if the model does happen to have seat belts. And you can really get a whole lot of dust out just by doing this. Now it won't be perfect because I am trying to make a video here, but um, it definitely looks better than when you started. As long as it looks significantly better than when you started, then, then you did a great job, I would say, for sure. And there we go. The Mustang is now all clean. Now you do have to keep in mind on some models, badging. So if you have badges that happen to be stickers like this BMW 325i, this may come off if you know, if you're rubbing it in a certain way when you're dusting it off. So just be very careful of that. You can still dust the, this model off in the ways that I showed with, you know, just a couple of um, cloths. But for the area where the badge is, be very careful and even use a brush like this and just very gently kind of brush around it like that, almost like you're painting that or like touching it, it up. Um, and that way you're not risking peeling off the uh, badge sticker. There's a second badge sticker actually back here too. Same goes for license plates on model cars too. A lot of those are also stickers. You can see that that one back there is in fact um, a sticker. And then if your model happens to have either a working convertible top or maybe a removable roof or something along those lines. Make sure that you clean that whole part too. Like for this one, um, it does have the working convertible top. I'm not gonna put it up fully right now, but um, I do make sure that when this is closed that it's closed tightly so no dust kind of gets inside. And then I do put up the top on here so I can kind of clean that off. And you do have, and you do need to use kind of a soft brush for anything that's, you know, canvas, rubber, or, or on leather, which is very rare to kind of see in model cars, but for some of your upper end models, like, you know, CMC and stuff like that, you will see like materials like that, that kind of require, I guess, special care when you do end up um, cleaning them of dust. Now, speaking of upper end models, when you are dusting off your upper end models, like here's a Norev Mercedes S-Class, if I can get that kind of here, it's a very big car, so it's kind of hard to get it in the shot here. There we go. You definitely want to use microfiber cloths because these higher end models do have a pretty sensitive paint on them. They even have kind of like a protective sort of clear coat. They're pretty much painted like the real cars are painted. And you know, with real cars, you do have to, you know, focus on kind of keeping scratches out and stuff when you are cleaning up um, like real cars. And same goes for these um, kind of higher end uh, models. So in the case of this one, Definitely will be using a, a microfiber cloth like that one and just kind of be more gentle with it. You don't want to be pushing into the car when you're cleaning it. This is regardless of, you know, upper end or lower end models. You just kind of want to be softly touching it when you do clean it like so, like that. So I'm going to kind of give it a nice go around on here. Be careful of any separately cast badges, whether or not they're made of metal or if they're stickers. You don't want to have those like be scraped off or rubbed off when you are cleaning up the model. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of finish it up like so. And these are also nice and um, non-abrasive on kind of clear plastic. Like this has the full sunroof going on, but this will not, you know, be scratching it up or anything because it is a microfiber cloth. And then for this one, you do have the windshield wipers and reservoir. So you will need to get in there with the brush like this. And just kind of gently um, dislodge all that dust back there. 
you kind of got you have to kind of blow the rest of it off and and everything. Now, while upper end models are kind of harder to clean and keep clean, most of them have side windows, so the interior is is pretty much going to be clean nine times out of ten. But if you do for some reason have to clean the interiors of these, kind of follow the same steps that I've been talking about. But make sure that you're only using a soft brush on on the inside, a very soft brush in um, this case. And for things like I'm um, carpeting, you're not going to really see as much dust on the carpeting as long as um, the car has like side windows and everything. But if you do happen to find dust, just use kind of a softer brush like this. It's going to be kind of unavoidable for upper end like convertible models with carpeted interiors to have dust on the insides of those. But to kind of, I guess, alleviate that, you can always have the have the car out on the shelf for a shorter increment of time than you would for your other cars in, in your collection. Um, just so you're kind of maintaining that car and preventing dust from getting on the inside when it is out in the open on the shelf. But this Norev model does have side windows, so the interior will, will, will pretty much always be, be clean. And yeah, there is some very slight gaps like up here and stuff, but very little dust is, is going to be getting in there. It'll take years and years and years for dust to get in there or for it to ever get as dusty as these two interiors that you saw here. So that's kind of it for, I guess, how to clean larger scale models. Now we're going to go ahead and get into techniques for cleaning smaller scale models. And then we'll finish off by how to clean um, vintage models. Okay, for the next part of the video, we'll be taking a look at how to clean smaller to medium sized um, die cast model cars. And by that, I mean anything from, you know, 164th or Hot Wheels size up to maybe like 124th scale or maybe like 132nd scale or something like that. A lot of the cleaning techniques that you'll be seeing here are kind of similar to those you would use for larger scale cars, although obviously for these, you're working with a much smaller vehicle. And in a lot of ways, it'll be kind of easier to get these cars cleaned. And in some ways, a little bit harder than the larger scale cars. So for any, you know, typical, you know, newer, like Hot Wheels or uh, Matchbox cars, they're, they're built to last forever. I mean, the Hot Wheels cars even say guaranteed for life when you get them in like those blister card packs. So... Really, the only thing you have to worry about with these types of cars is like dust and everything. And you can use pretty much any soft cloth you'd like to use just to get, you know, dust or fingerprints off these. You can even kind of wrap the, of course, you probably want to use two hands, but, you know, just a small dusting like that would pretty much keep the cars clean nine times out of ten. Of course, you may have special cases where you have an exposed interior, like for this GMC Hummer truck. Uh, the front part of the interior is opened up. So you'd probably want to use a brush just to kind of get any like loose dust out of there like this. And also with these uh, pickup truck beds too. Kind of do the same thing. Just brush out the dust with the brush. You're not going to get every speck of dust out, especially because the interiors of these cars always have some kind of opening. Like this F-150 has the window open or the both of the front windows open, I, I should say. So dust will make its way in there. You won't get a whole lot of dust in there, but it's going to be pretty much impossible to get the dust out of the interior. You're probably not going to see much because it is such a smaller car and everything. And a lot of newer Hot Wheels, I've noticed, do come with side windows. Like this Mercedes um, 500E, you have side windows for the Lucid Air. That has side windows. And that's kind of cool to see because that way you just have to worry about keeping the outsides clean. With just what I mentioned before. Just give them kind of a nice dusting off with a cloth like this. And the same will kind of be true for 143rd scale cars. Um, for older ones, like here's a Corgi a Buick Riviera, um, I'll kind of get more into vintage cars in the next part of the video, but just make sure that you're using a, a soft cloth at, at all times and a soft brush. This has kind of that trailer hitch and a bunch of nooks and crannies, so you're going to want to brush those out like this. And then same thing for convertibles of kind of medium scale cars. Use a brush to get in between the, the seats and pretty much just get what you can. Again, it's not going to be perfect. You can always... Just kind of give it like a blow look like that to get any loose dust out. And this is a Corvair by um, Yatming. And here's a Camaro by Yatming. With medium scale cars, you are going to have kind of wider openings for the windows because obviously they're bigger than like the Hot Wheels size. And you can't really get a brush in there too well. The only way to really totally clean these is if you take the whole car apart. Like disassemble it, get the interior piece out, dust it off as just a loose piece, but that can be a, that can be quite a lot of um, work. And I would only recommend doing that in maybe extreme cases where let's say a model was just very dirty or you got it and needs a total cleanup. For models that you get new and you're keeping for years, you won't really need to do much besides giving them kind of periodic dustings and just getting the uh, fingerprints off. And for cars like this NYPD 
um, cruiser here that has kind of extra pieces on it. Dust will get kind of underneath that, so use a brush like this to get the dust out, like so. And if you do have opening doors on models, like this one does, like that, then that's good to get a brush in there to kind of get any dust out of like the dashboard and like the foot wells and stuff like that. But not totally unnecessary, but it will kind of help you kind of maintain the appearance of these cars. And here's two pullback cars by a Kinsmart. This is a Bugatti Chiron Super Sport. And this is larger, so it's easier to do it with this cloth. Black does attract a lot of um, fingerprints, especially if it's like a glossy black paint color. So you're just gonna wanna get all of those off like so. Then use the brush to kind of get uh, between the windshield and the hood, along the doors, any kind of nooks and crannies, like the Chiron has that engine cover back there that will attract dust on the inside. So you can see how I'm kind of getting that in there and just brushing it off like that. The interiors of these are kind of hard to get into, even if the doors do um, open up, but just kind of get what you can, you know, and just blow the rest of the dust out. And this uh, mail truck, this uh, Jeep DJ4, has sliding doors and full side windows. So not much dust will make its way in the interior. So I'm not gonna worry about this one um, as much, but again, routine cleanings are pretty much your best bet for models like these. Now we'll get into how to clean um, vintage die cast cars or just vintage uh, model cars in general. So in this next segment here, I'm gonna be showing you how to clean older die cast cars such as these here. Now this will be kind of different from when you clean, you know, like newer cars, because you are going to want to pay um, extra careful care um, to certain aspects, so, such as the paint and if these might have like decals on them and everything like that. And just due to the overall age of most of these models, like the two oldest cars here are these two Matchbox cars from the 1950s. Um, and older Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars tended to have stickers as opposed to painted on tampos. And just older die-cast cars in general, or just older model cars in general, you're going to see more, you know, stickers. Um, and, you know, as they age, of course, the paint's going to be a little bit more, I shouldn't say brittle, maybe weaker. Um, you might have some paint fade going on, maybe even some, you know, chipping in, in certain cases. So all these are things that you need to keep in mind when, when you're cleaning um, these older die-cast cars. And, of course, you may have some that are in very good shape for their age, like this original um, Hot Wheels Redline Cord and this Dodge Aries wagon from the 80s. This is pretty much in perfect shape. And this one is definitely in just immaculate shape. So pretty much to sum it up for these, when you're cleaning these, always use softer items. Um, you're not gonna wanna use brushes like this that have kind of rougher plastic-based bristles on them because you may risk you know, scratching up the, the paint jobs or you know, causing um, paint fade or just you know, putting some finer like kind of marks on there. Always use a very soft brush like this one when it comes to dusting these. And yes, for this cord, you know, you do have lots of nooks and crannies that do have to get dusted. So a very soft brush like this will work fine because not only is it soft and will be easy on the paint, but it also kind of gets into all those um, smaller areas that you can't really reach with um, other types of brushes or cloths. And just for giving models a quick clean, you can always use a thinner and small microfiber cloth like these here. And same goes for the in interiors of these cars too. With the softer brush, you can kind of get in between the, the seats and everything. You're not gonna get every speck of dust off of these smaller cars because it is pretty hard to keep these things completely clean just due to their small size. And especially if you have them kind of out on like a desk or a shelf um, like this. But, you know, as long as you're kind of keeping them clean and maintained and, and using softer cloths and brushes when you do clean them, you're gonna help preserve these cars, or I guess older cars in general, for many years to come. Now, in most cases, when you're cleaning older and smaller die-cast model cars, um, using the techniques I described previously with just using a small microfiber cloth or using a smaller soft brush will pretty much do the trick in fulfilling most of your cleaning needs. However, you might have some cases where you have cars that are fairly dirty and you may need to use soap and water in that case. Now, these two particular Matchbox cars here are from the late 1970s. They're from the Superfast series. I got them in a box of a bunch of other kind of old cars from a local hobby shop. And pretty much all the cars in this box were pretty dirty. And I ended up using soap and water to clean them up. These two, I also used soap and water on. They weren't really that dirty, but I decided to just kind of, you know, make them a little bit more shiny and clean um, by using just some soap and water. And the soap you're going to want to use is something mild, like hand soap and dish soap, as long as the dish soap is kind of like a mild type. 
And you don't have to use a ton of soap when you're cleaning these types of cars. And to get the dirt off, you can use a soft toothbrush like this. And then when you're scrubbing the cars, do it very lightly. Like you don't want to scrub it so hard into the paint that, you know, paint comes off or that you leave some, you know, lines from the brush. You're probably not going to run into that risk with a toothbrush like this. But um, as, as long as you're just kind of going it over lightly, most of the dirt, if not all the dirt, is going to come off. Now, with that being said, keep in mind that you will encounter cars with, with um, stickers or decals. Like this BMW 3.0 CSL, which is also made by Matchbox, has this decal on the hood here. So I would never want to use water and soap on this one in, in that case. You're going to have to just make do with um, using like a dry cloth or cleaning it using like a dry means because you don't want to make the decal come off. If you're planning on fully restoring a car and you don't care about the decals, then go ahead, you know, scrub away. But in the case of this one, I did want to keep that on there. And this one I've actually had for many, many years. I didn't actually have to scrub this one clean, but I did just want to show this as an example of a car that would have a decal on it. Now, once you're finished with kind of cleaning up these cars with soap and water, um, you're just going to want to rinse them off under the sink. I'm not actually going to do it with this one because I already cleaned it. And then you're going to want to wrap them up in a paper towel. And then to do the actual kind of more thorough drying, make sure you use a soft cloth like on this one here. And you can even just wrap them up in this cloth too. And then towards the end, I let them probably sit for maybe like up to half an hour, just wrapped up in some kind of paper towel or just a regular towel or a cloth of some sorts. And then once that time has passed, then you can go ahead and just dry them off more, more um, thoroughly. You're not gonna get every single speck of water off, especially because you do have lots of nooks and um, crannies and everything. And these won't rust if there's a tiny bit of water still um, in them, but I would, you know, clean these with soap and water very sparingly. I pretty much just do it once and then you're done. And then from then on, just, you know, clean these up with, you know, dry cloths or with microfiber cloths if need be. So I just wanted to kind of go over that technique because you might encounter cases where cars are dirty enough to the point where you're going to need soap and water and the dirt won't effectively come off with just a dry um, cleaning. So I hope this was kind of a helpful overview of how to clean die-cast cars, whether they're vintage, smaller scale, larger scale, pretty much any type of model car that you're going to be um, collecting. There are different ways to clean them, and that way you're kind of maintaining them for many years to come. So feel free to comment down below with, with your thoughts on the video or if you have any questions about um, cleaning techniques and related topics, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.